We may have talked before about what's going on in Pakistan in terms of the blasphemy laws and the use of social media now to crack down on people that they are accusing of blaspheming their prophet. Uh, look, I, I don't care what your religious beliefs are. I really don't. It's, it's between you and, and whatever deity you serve or, or don't. What concerns me is when you start taking your religious laws and trying to apply them to other people who don't believe as you do, and then when you start imposing sentences like death on people, well, that's a problem. And I, I don't care, again, whether it's a Muslim thing or a Jewish thing or a Buddhist thing or a Christian thing. You don't have the right to kill somebody because they don't believe like you believe. If you are so harmed by their words mocking your prophet, then maybe your prophet deserves to be mocked. I'm reminded of a, a story in the Bible, actually, when uh, a certain prophet from God by the name of Elijah went on and challenged the prophets of Baal, who was the popular God in Israel at the time. Do you remember this story? He said, look, I'm going to give you guys a head start. Build your altar, set up the fire, do everything and you know, get, get the wood ready, get everything all set, and then ask your God, Baal, to start the fire for you. Burn up the sacrifice. If he can't do it, or, you know, we'll see what happens. And then after you had your chance, then I'll do it with my God, and we'll see who wins. Well, after hours of them dancing around, calling on Baal to start the fire, Elijah starts mocking them. And I mean, like, seriously mocking, saying, oh, maybe Baal's out of town. Maybe he's visiting the bathroom. He's too busy to get off the toilet to come and s start your fire for you. And then after all of that mockery, he goes to his altar and he douses the sacrifice with water. So much so that it filled up the trench around the altar. I mean, he made it so it just soaking wet so that no human way of lighting a fire, and certainly not in the ancient days, would have started the fire. I, sometimes when I go camping, I take a flare with me just in case I need to start a fire in the, in the wet. But Elijah didn't have a flare. What he did is he called on upon his God. And what happened was that fire came down from heaven and burned up the sacrifice and the stones, the altar itself. I mean, it completely blew people's mind that after hours and hours of calling upon their God to no avail, that Elijah, asking his God, saw a fire come down from heaven that burned up not just the sacrifice, but even the stones on it which it was sitting. Now, this is a great story because, you see, look, if Muhammad is such a great prophet, then surely he doesn't need his defenders, his followers, to go around killing people to prove how great he is. Right? And just it seems to me that when they're cracking down on people on social media platforms or really in any any form of public discourse, it, it's, it, it not only chills the idea of free speech, and this is something like out of the book 1984, where people are afraid to speak what's on their mind out of the fear that they are going to have some kind of a repercussion to their own lives whether they're going to lose their job or whether they're going to actually even literally be killed in the street for speaking what they believe. I want people to speak what they believe. If you disagree with me, I want you to engage with me in conversation. I want you to try to convince me where I'm wrong. Don't threaten me because all that does is it proves to me that your cheese is so weak that it needs to be enforced by violence. That's my two cents. If you'd like to engage me on this topic or any other one, send me an email, steve at radiofreespeech.com, or give me a call, 907-458-0495. We'll talk about it.